is a 1985 Mercedes 380SL, a car that was just about ruined by the Malaise era and US regulation. It might look like a park bench, but it's actually an elegant looking car that's disrupted by massive bumpers. Bumpers which were mandated by ancient US safety regulations. The headlights were modified for the same reason. A rule from 1940 requiring all cars to have sealed beam headlamps. This is the part where I would normally test drive the car. Unfortunately, this one's fuel pump chose to lock up, but you're not missing much. If you were buying from a Mercedes dealer in 1985, the 380SL was the only choice available. While Europe had a variety of 6 and 8 cylinder options, the United States was only offered one very slow choice. Though it was one of the best convertibles available in the 80s, it's about as impressive in 2017 as saying you're one of the best players at Galaga. But there was hope for enthusiasts wanting some performance and variety. And that came from something called the Gray Market. This 1985 500SL was built for the European market and was the fastest production Mercedes at the time. With no restrictive emissions requirements in Europe yet, this rally inspired all aluminum 5 liter V8 put out a respectable 240 horsepower and had a 0 to 60 time of 7.2 seconds. this car looks when parked next to the 380 SL. It looks lower, sleeker, and completely transforms the look of the car. I can't help but want to sit on a park bench all day and take in this car's understated elegance. This 500 SL was never meant for the US market, but was imported legally in 1985 thanks to the gray market. US based importers with no regulations to stop them were able to buy these European spec cars from German dealers and ship them over. Even with a great profit margin, they could sell these better looking and performing cars for less than a 380 SL offered at the Mercedes dealer. Obviously this was something the US government and Mercedes dealers did not take kindly to, and the gray market back door was slammed shut after 1985, making it the last year you could get any cool Euro spec cars for almost 30 years. Recently, regulations have loosened to allow Euro cars to be imported legally as long as the car is at least 25 years old. I sold a few of these gray market 500 SLs back in my dealership days, and most went back to their home country where they command a lot of money. But I have no plans on selling this one. It is literally my first car that I've been driving for 15 years. It was imported new for my grandmother in 1985, and I grew up with this convertible tossing around my bowl cut hair, a style which I clung to about a decade longer than anyone else. I have my father to thank for knowing about the gray market and helping my grandmother order this European hot rod. Without his help, she would have gone with her original choice, a Chrysler LeBaron. I wonder how different my life would have been if I had started hoarding K cars instead of Mercedes. <laughs> It was actually the first car I ever drove. At four years old, I was left unattended in the car and started pretending to drive it. Not knowing what I was doing, I popped it into neutral, rolling down the street until gently bumping a parked truck. I am really protective of this thing, and it doesn't leave the garage much. When I started driving it 15 years ago, it had 111,000 miles. It now has 130,000, and I know it hasn't left the state of Kansas in at least 30 years. Every time I do get it out, even on a 40 degree day like today, the smell of the old Mercedes leather is just so intoxicating and it feels like the perfect grand touring car when you're behind the wheel. I can only imagine how much fun this car would be to cruise south down the German Autobahn at 150 miles an hour, then crossing the Swiss border and driving through the Alps, eventually hitting the Italian Riviera and stopping for a weekend in Monaco. But something that seems just as fun is going to pick up my grandmother, who no longer drives for a ride. It's a little chilly for an 87 year old, so I've decided to put the hardtop on and give me another chance to redeem my masculinity in a show of brute strength. This is what Mercedes enthusiasts call the turtle method for putting on the hardtop. This thing weighs about 100 pounds and it's super duper awkward. So here we go. Okay, I gotta face it backwards. Yes. All right. 
Ow. 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 Now that I've given my chiropractor something to work on for the next few weeks, it was time to pick up Grandmother, and she had quite the dramatic story to tell. Well, anyway, the, the elastic went out of the waistband. On your pants? Yes, yesterday's pants. They were gray velvet. Yep. So, did your pants drop in front of everybody, or? No, I just, it's, I just can't believe it, but it happened. Yeah. Well, they were probably old. They were. Well, so is everything I've got. <laughs> now, you're not filming now. <laughs> yeah, we're filming now. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to act natural. Well, I am. So, I yeah, hear. all of YouTube gets to hear about your pants falling down, I guess. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's terrible. Have you heard of YouTube? Yeah, I've heard of it. I'm not sure what all it does. People put videos on there, like Betty White's really popular on there. She is. She'll have hundreds of millions of views or whatever. She had a hundred, didn't she? Getting close in her 90s, yeah? Yeah. You ever done carpool karaoke? I don't know what that is. You just sing along. Oh, really? People watch it. It's kind of like Apollo 911 theme song. Fly me to the moon. Let you know the words? Like on. A Jupiter and Mars, yep. In other words, hold my hand, my heart with song, let me sing forevermore. In other words, I love you. Good song.